step 6 is the establishment of uh, diaphragm behavior and how you, you are going to model your diaphragm. Uh, section 12.3.1 actually guides us in ASC 7-16, uh, guides us about the diaphragm flexibility. Uh, our diaphragm, our floor diaphragm can be flexible, this one, or it can be rigid, right? So this is a decision we have to make at this particular stage. There is a calculation also which can guide us whether we should go for a flexible diaphragm or a rigid diaphragm. But in most of the cases, if uh, our diaphragm is stiff, if it is thick, uh, we can directly go with the rigid diaphragm assumption. Uh, but we can also calculate and the code also guides us about that. So we calculate the flexible diaphragm condition in this manner that we apply the equivalent static forces representing the future earthquake and calculate the, uh, the drift value, deflection value, the average value in the middle and the maximum value and if the check this ratio if this is greater than 2 then uh, we go for the flexible option otherwise we go for the rigid diaphragm option. So this is uh, I will not go into detail of this but this is one decision which you have to take uh, at this particular stage before applying any analysis procedure. So section 12.3.1 you can check for more details about the diaphragm uh, flexibility. Step 7 is uh, determine the configuration irregularities. So there are two types of irregularities defined by IBC 2021. Horizontal structural irregularities defined in table 12.3-1 and then vertical structural irregularities defined in table 12.3-2. Some of the irregularities in these tables can be directly, you can just observe your uh, structural geometry and check that they exist or not. But for some irregularity types, you have to perform the analysis first to check that this irregularity exists or not. So let me show you these two tables. Uh, yeah, this is that, uh, that uh, flexibility, uh, diaphragm flexibility provision. So either you go for flexible if, you, if any of uh, these uh, conditions are fulfilled. Otherwise, you go for rigid. And there is a guideline about you can also perform some analysis first and decide whether you go for a flexible diaphragm condition or a rigid diaphragm condition. These are the two tables for irregularities. First is the horizontal irregularities 12.3-1 and then 12.3-2 is vertical structural irregularities. First let me quickly explain the horizontal irregularities. Horizontal means that uh, in the plan of the building, the stiffness distribution and mass distribution is irregular. For example, if there is a, a torsional irregularity which is called type 1A, extreme torsional irregularity called uh, 1B, then re-entrant uh, corner irregularity, diaphragm discontinuity, out of plane offset, non-parallel system irregularity, type 2, 3, 4 and 5. For 2, 3, 4 and 5, uh, you may not require any analysis to check whether this irregularity exists or not. You just check this description and check whether this description uh, is there in your real structure or not. For example, it is defined what diaphragm discontinuity irregularity means, right? So if there is a diaphragm with an abrupt discontinuity or variation in stiffness, including one that has a cut out or open area greater than 50% of the gross enclosed diaphragm area. So if this is your building plot and your diaphragm is like this, like this. So this is a sudden change in the uh, continuity of the diaphragm, which is more than 60% of the area, 50% uh, of the area. So, so there are some uh, two, three, four, five, you can directly check from the structural configuration whether these irregularities exist or not. So you first have to establish the irregularity types both horizontal and vertical before entering into analysis procedure because there will be several provisions in the analysis procedure which will be related to your irregularity type. right? 
so 2 3 4 5 you can check read that description and check whether they exist or not but for 1a and 2 uh, 1a and 1b you have to first carry out the analysis and the analysis results will be used to 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 confirm whether the 1a or 1b irregularity exists or not right so i will discuss that in next lecture in more detail uh, when we uh, discuss about the an seismic analysis procedure itself so the drift values calculated by the seismic analysis procedure will decide their values will decide whether 1a or 1b exist or not actually it is the it is the ratio between maximum drift and the average drift at the corners of your building so if if you have a rectangular diaphragm you will have four corners uh, actually the drift values at these corners when compared with the average drift value will decide whether 1a or 1b exist or not so i'll discuss more about 1a and 1b in the seismic analysis procedures so for 1a and 1b you need to first run the analysis and come back and check whether they exist or not for vertical uh, stiffness irregularities again stiffness uh, ir irregularity it can have soft story irregularity extreme soft story irregularity obviously any jump in the vertical stiffness in the vertical direction uh, will result in vertical structural irregularity for example if the elevation view is like this like this so vertically if you see these are different stories this is podium and then a very cylinder tower is going up so there is a sudden jump in the stiffness in the vertical direction at this particular level and there will be a severe shear concentration at that level when this whole building will be shaken by an earthquake right so uh, the criteria to declare type 1a and 1b uh, is defined here so you need to get the story stiffness values and then check whether the difference is more than 70% or 60% check that criteria to declare whether it is 1a or 1b then mass irregularity vertical geometric irregularity in plane discontinuity discontinuity in the strength so first 1a and 1b were about stiffness but if there is a weak story suddenly the, you get a very weak story that is Uh, discontinuity in the lateral strength type 5a and then there is an extreme weak story uh, irregularity and the criteria is defined here so you can go through this 5a 5b description and for uh, checking 5a and 5b you need story strength for 1a and 1b you need story stiffness right so in this particular step number 7 uh, you will establish the configuration irregularities horizontal and vertical and then finally this is the last step on which we will end this discussion that uh, once you establish the irregularities uh, now you can uh, in step 8 select the method of analysis so which of the three methods equivalent lateral force procedure modal response spectrum or linear time history and non linear time history which of the method is permitted to be used for your particular structural system so based on the seismic design category and the structural characteristics which can include the height of the building and the irregularities which you just checked in the last stage obviously for 1a and 1b uh, you first need to perform the equivalent lateral force procedure uh, to check whether 1a and 1b exist or not but once you check that you again come back to this table and see whether which of the method is permitted and which of the method is not permitted so uh, this is that table 12.6-1 from asc 7-16 for the seismic design category b and c for all structures all three analysis procedures are permitted right for d e and f more severe seismic design categories depending upon the risk category 1 or 2 all three are permitted but uh, there can be certain cases in which some can be not permitted for example these are the one 
टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव क्राइटेरिया फॉर विच ऑल थ्री आर परमिटेड एनी अदर क्राइटेरिया इफ योर स्ट्रक्चर हैज एनी अदर इेगुलरिटी और एनी अदर हाइट रेंज विच इज नॉट मैंशन इन दीज फोर और फाइव क्राइटेरिया योर ई एल एफ प्रोसीजर इज नॉट परमिटेड राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स चेक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ लाइट फ्रेम कंस्ट्रक्शन स्ट्रक्चर विद नो स्ट्रक्चरल इरेगुलरिटीज एंड नॉट एक्सीडिंग वन सिक्सटी फीट इन स्ट्रक्चरल हाइट इफ योर स्ट्रक्चर हैज सर्टन पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रक्चरल इरेगुलरिटी विच इज नॉट मैंशन इन दिस लोअर क्लॉजेज एंड इट हैज अट मोर देन वन सिक्सटी फीट देन ई एल एफ प्रोसीजर इज नॉट अलाउड you can only go for either modal response spectrum analysis or linear time history analysis or if you want you can also go for non linear time history analysis obviously that will require a lot of time so um, so we uh, we can go for rsa procedure or linear time history analysis for a design and for detailed performance evaluation if we want we can go for non linear time history analysis but code permits you to even use the non linear time history analysis also for the purpose of seismic analysis for design purpose right so uh, please check this these criteria 1 2 3 4 and then 5 if uh, your structure is out of these five criteria and if it is in the seismic design category b e uh, d e and f then you are not allowed to use elf procedure right so and in fifth of the uh, uh, criteria your horizontal irregularity type 2 3 4 and vertical irregularity also they are part of that criteria right so you must establish your irregularities first you must establish your seismic design category and height of the building and everything Th those information will be used as an input in this table to finally check which analysis procedure is permitted or not right so that's how at the end of this step 8 you will be knowing that this analysis procedure is permitted or this is not permitted right in short very irregular kind of structures and those exist in severe seismic design categories elf procedure is not permitted right and you have to go for response spectrum analysis or time history analysis whether linear or non linear if you go for linear time history analysis your r and cd factor and every factor will be applicable if you go for non linear time history analysis then those code factors which implicitly account for non linear behavior they are not required 